Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's session, which is an introduction to the Antibodies and SARA framework, new national framework available to the HE sector. My name is Marianne Hutchins. I'm head of marketing and communications for the SUMS group. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Jane Thorne, who's our head of category Manage management services to talk us through this framework and the benefits available to you through using it. So you'll see, uh, you'll see Jane for most of today's session and then I'll pop up uh, again at the end after going through a few things with you here at the beginning. So in terms of what you'll get out of today's session, uh, we'll talk to you about what SUPC is and how we can help you, the wider higher education market and how this framework sits within it, the value of the framework, the award method, so how to practically use the framework and how to get more support if you need it. So before we get going, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about SUPC for those of you who may not be familiar with us. Uh, we are a not-for-profit and a charity and we are owned by universities. Uh, so we're very much part of the sector that we support. And we help universities buy smarter. So I probably don't need to tell you about all of the challenges facing those who work in procurement and procure as part of their jobs. Uh, tight resources, um, stretched funds. And so really what we do is offer procurement solutions that help you deliver best value for money. We also have a, a fairly unique subscription model uh, in that we return the majority of marketing premiums garnered through uh, institutional spend in frameworks back to the members. So what that means is the more that your institution spends through a framework with a marketing premium, and this one does have one, the more you will get back at the end of the year uh, in returned marketing premium. So that's quite unique across the sector. Uh, SUPC is part of a larger group, the SUMS group, and together we support universities across all areas of professional services. So we help with procurement uh, and offering frameworks. We help procurement teams um, benchmark their activity and improve their performance. And we help organizations uh, at universities across all other professional service areas to uh, improve their performance as well. So overall, we have over 150 members. We represent over 50% of the HE um, sector and uh, very much here to be your sort of preferred consortium of choice when it comes to procurement. We also operate though within a very collaborative sector. So SUPC works with our uh, sector consortia partners through the university's uh, purchasing consortia. And that helps us make sure that we all deliver value through our procurement activity so that we're not duplicating something that's being delivered by another consortium elsewhere. Really what you're getting is uh, the best possible use of resources across the sector. So with that, I'll hand over to Jane. I'll say goodbye for now and I'll pop up towards the end for FAQs. So over to you, Jane. Thanks so much, Marion. Thanks for that great introduction. So the value of this framework for the sector. So we know there's been significant spend through the framework in the last three years, and there continues to be compliance spend routes um, and frameworks meet those needs. So we also wanna ensure due diligence for responsible procurement across a range of areas such as human rights, the environment and welfare. Um, we are welcoming two new supplies onto this framework um, and a new and unique award method for lot two. So this framework has been designed with significant input from the sector and the institutions. So it really does meet the sector's needs. Um, the specifications and the procurement methods are dictated by the institutions. So the greater the involvement, the better the framework. Um, it's also had input from our consortia partners um, with both the specification and the evaluation. And we really are grateful for that support. So if you did help and your name is not on here, we're really sorry, but we really are grateful. So thank you. So why should you use a framework? So we know that the procurement process to follow the regulations properly is really time consuming and it's really costly. If we do that for you, we save you the time and money by bypassing that initial really complex process. Secondly, when we come together as a sector, the suppliers are really, really keen to win those big pieces of work. So they offer much better rates than if you were to approach the market on your own. The suppliers also have to use our terms and conditions that we pre-agree at the ITT stage. So when you come to use it, there's no tricky negotiation for you. So let's talk about the frameworks and what that wording actually means. So the framework agreement, while we refer to them as framework agreements, that framework agreement sits between SUPC and the supplier. The contract that sits between institutions and the supplier is called the call-off. 
So while as a group they're called a framework, the actual contract itself that sits between you and the supplier is called the call off. Um, and that's pre-agreed, as I said, so there's no tricky negotiation and there shouldn't be too many changes to those when you use them either. So let's look at sustainability and responsible procurement. And these are really big, important areas for the sector now. Um, and they fall into three large categories, uh, people, planet and prosperity. So with people, we're looking at things like modern slavery and we're looking at labour standards, both here in the UK and overseas, where a lot of the manufacturing and supply bases are. Um, with planet, we're looking at carbon reduction. We're looking at sustainable resourcing, things like the Better Cotton Initiative for your lab coats. Um, and in prosperity, we're looking at things like social value and living wage to actually be a part of those communities in which the institutions operate. Um, we've also, we are also currently undertaking a post-award modern slavery statement compliance check. Um, and we've also put in measures for continuous improvement for both human and animal rights on this framework. So on the framework, over the next two slides, you'll see the 18 suppliers that were awarded places on the framework over the two lots. Some suppliers sit on both lots um, and you can see more about these supplies in the buyer's guide and on the HE contracts database. So these are your lot one suppliers and you'll see they're Cambridge Bioscience and Enzo and they're the two new, frame, two new framework suppliers on this lot. And then on lot two, there are significantly fewer suppliers on this framework, but it still gives you a really good selection of suppliers uh, with whom you can work with um, for your institution's needs. So let's look at some of these call off methods. So there are quite a number of methods for this framework, um, and this is to help you best meet the needs of your institution. So we'll go through these call off methods now. So direct award. So when you direct award, you don't make any amendments to the terms and conditions. And these are traditionally best suited to low risk and low value procurements. Um, and you probably should really not do this too often. It's really kind of for those quick and urgent procurements, but anything else we'd recommend really any of the, any of the other award methods. So direct award the ranked method. Um, so when you call off and you do a direct award, you go to the first ranked supplier, the supplier that scored highest across all of the measures that we put in place at the tender. If you don't want to contract with that supplier um, and they have confirmed through this very, very stringent list of things here. So whether they confirm that they don't have the capacity to undertake it, they can't work within your timescales or they've got a conflict of interest, at that stage you can look at the number two ranked supplier and so on and so forth. But again, there are no changes to the terms and conditions when using this method. So mini competitions. So these are a really good and recommended route where you want to build a really good relationship with that supplier and create a partnership going forwards. And the more information you give to the supplier, the better value you'll achieve long term in terms of both price and costing and better terms and conditions and better service. So the mini competition over the e-marketplace. So you've got two options here, depending on your spend profile. And you once you've looked at your spend profile and seen what you're purchasing, uh, you can then determine which process is best for you. And this is a mini competition route specifically for lot two for Sierra products. Um, and this has some specific rules around batch testing and how you move that process forwards if that's the type of products you're buying. So it's really quite specific and we do really recommend that you fully read and digest the buyer's guide and you work with your internal stakeholders to ensure you fully captured their needs. Um, and how you're going to go through that batch testing and how you narrow down the supply base. But the, the buyer's guide is packed full of that information and much more detailed on this specific process for you. So the desktop exercise. Um, so this is where you can alter the original weightings of the ITT by up to 20 percentage points. 
and you can adjust these to best meet your institution's specific needs. So, for example, you might want to focus more heavily on quality and sustainability and have less focus on price. And then you can take those percentage points, move them to one of those areas that's more important to you. And the desktop calculator will automatically adjust those scores and then put a new supplier into the number one spot. You can then do your direct award to that supplier on the desktop method. The desktop calculator will be available on the HE contracts database. So you can go in there, have a look, try it out, see how it works. Um, and it's a really good award method. So what are our recommendations when you come to call off? Do read the buyer's guide. Um, I know I do say that a lot. It is honestly, they're specifically designed to give you all the information you need if you don't want to get in touch. Um, Give the suppliers as much information as you can. Do engage them before you go to mini competition uh, to understand what they can do for you because it may influence the specification you want to use. So what should you not do? You can't award to every supplier on the framework. It's not compliant. Um, it also hampers the quality of the service you get um, and you won't get as good value for money um, and it, it's time consuming for the suppliers and they do pass that on mini competition guidance. So do evaluate the areas that are specific to your institution. They have gone through, the suppliers have gone through considerable due diligence um, to get on the frameworks. So they don't need to be retested. Give them as much information as you can. Invite all of the suppliers on that lot to participate. Be fair and transparent. While it's not in the regulations, do give full feedback to the unsuccessful suppliers. The suppliers do better um, when they've got feedback and they can do better for you as institutions when they know the areas they were weaker and that helps everybody. So do make sure you give full feedback. Don't. Don't needlessly reevaluate areas or ask questions that were covered at tender stage. We ask those questions so that you don't have to. And don't overcomplicate it. These mini competitions can be quite simple um, if you don't do too much reevaluation. Um, and the mini competition process should not be anywhere near as onerous as the original tender itself. And don't make any changes to the call off documentation. Any substantial changes. So looking ahead, uh, what's happening in the STEM ed space going forwards? So the National STEM ed group led by SUPC and chaired by Jatin from Aston are working together to produce a national strategy. This new strategy will review every aspect of the supply chain um, and identify trends going forwards. So if there's something specific you want to see from frameworks uh, and something specific or a different area you'd like to see within these frameworks, do get in touch um, and let us know how you would like to proceed. Okay, so if I pop back up, Jane, I mean, a lot of these questions for folks that were listening, these questions cover off some of the information you've already covered in today's session, but they're the questions that we're most often um, approached with from members, I suppose. So uh, if I'll just fire them at you, Jane, and you just let me know uh, okay. a quick fire answer. So can I choose which supplier I use? Uh, no, you can't. Um, so the award methods will determine which supplier best meets your needs according to the parameters you set down. Um, so if it's a quick and easy requirement that you need, probably direct award because it'll be a small one-off, low risk, low value purchase. If you want to go to a mini competition, decide what your criteria are and the award methods will, will pick you a supplier that best suits your needs. Right, okay. And can I add a supplier to the framework? So there's a framework or a supplier I've worked with before, I wanna add them to the framework, can I do that? You can't, we can't add suppliers to frameworks midterm um, and you can't invite anybody who's not on the framework to participate in a mini competition or in one of the other exercises. Okay, so I guess that links to the next question, which is, can I deselect a supplier from the framework, someone I don't want to work with, for example? Uh, no, you can't. Those, those processes to deselect suppliers through the regulations are really complicated. Um, and all of these suppliers have been through significant due diligence exercises to make sure they are good quality suppliers that can best meet your needs. Uh, so don't deselect anybody from the framework. That will be non-compliant and could land you in hot water. Okay. Um, can I run one tender across multiple lots or do I need to split that by lot? You do need to split it by lots because as you saw, there weren't as many suppliers on lot two. And while a lot of the lot two suppliers sit on lot one, some of the lot supply, lot one suppliers don't sit on lot two. So you'll be excluding a whole bunch of suppliers unfairly. So don't do that. 
do use the two lots separately. Yeah, and I guess it just brings up the point of a lot of um, similar phrases for one procedure. So we've said tender here, but we're talking about a mini competition or a further competition. Yeah, right? That's right. Yeah. We do use a lot of we do use a lot of terminology that crosses over. Yeah. Uh, can I invite suppliers for other lots of their framework? So I think you've sort of covered this, haven't you? Yeah. So don't invite other suppliers from other lots or frameworks. Um, when you do that mini competition, invite all of the suppliers from that framework. Um, don't, but don't invite any. Yeah, this. so everybody who's on that lot has to be invited, but people from outside can't take part. Okay. Um, and so if someone's finding the terms and conditions quite complicated, do they have to use the terms and conditions associated with this framework? Yes, they do. So as we said, the framework terms and conditions govern the relationship between SUPC and the supplier, um, and the call-off terms and conditions govern the relationship between the institution and the supplier. Um, and they're already pre-agreed, so the suppliers have already signed up to those terms and conditions. At Minicomp, you can make some changes, but they can't be significant. Um, so those suppliers know what they're signing up to, um, so they shouldn't be too complicated for you to use because they're already set out. Um, and they're a lot less onerous and complicated than some we see out there in the wider public sector. Mm. So yeah, do have a look. You know, they are, ours are quite quite kind. Okay, okay. Um, so just following up, I guess, on one of the call-off methods, um, how much can I amend the weightings in a further or a mini competition? Uh, for example, if I'm only interested in getting the lowest price from the suppliers, is, the way, is there a way I can prioritize that? Um, so you would look at the, um, the terminology specifically set out in the buyer's guide for that, and it's usually 20 percentage points, which is the same as the desktop exercise. Um, but just as a point, do be careful about putting too much on price because it will hamper the quality of service you get. Um, and, you know, that might not be something you want to risk. So do be very careful when you change those weightings. Mm. But I suppose for institutions that have a really strong focus on responsible procurement, which is becoming more important um, across the membership, then that is something that can they can increase the importance of that in the in the weighting. Absolutely. And if there are really, really specific institution requirements, ask additional questions over and above what we've done um, and re then, then evaluate those responses as well. OK. OK. Uh, can I ask for references or evidence of relevant experience? No, you can't, because that will already have been done at the ITT and framework stage. Um, so we've done all of that asking for you and you can't ask again. Um, it's also really time consuming to go through those things. Um, so your time is better so spent elsewhere looking at things that are really specific and meaningful for your institution. OK, OK. And then our, our last FAQ is if the framework only has six months left to run on it, although we know this one's just launched. So we've got we've got a couple of years on this one. Can I have a call off contract that will extend beyond the life of the framework? Yes, you can. Um, so your call off can technically last the same length as the original framework. Um, so you could award for three years while, you know, there's only six months left on the original framework. And while that's compliant, it's not recommended because as the new frameworks come out, they advance in all sorts of ways in, in sort of terms and conditions we simplify, the market's moved on, there's technology, there's innovation, and often better pricing. And the pricing will be more up to date. So you get better service by using the new framework. So while you can, I wouldn't recommend it. Hang on for a new one where you can. Okay, that's really helpful. And I suppose if people have more questions, um, just they can they can contact us, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. So if you need any more help, um, first of all, have a look at the HE contracts database. All of the documentation relating to the framework will be on there. And I do always say it, but the um, buyer's guide is in there and it's absolutely chock full of information to help you get going. Um, and if you don't want to ring and call anybody, um, it should all be in there. But if you are confused, yeah, do do get in touch and give us a call and we'll see, we'll see how we can talk you through it. So that's all for today. Thanks ever so much for watching. Um, if you want to input into that national strategy, as I say, do get in touch and do, through, do it through that SUPC email address you see there. Um, and if you've got any other questions um, related to this or any of our other agreements or services, then please do get in touch. Thanks ever so much for watching today.